And welcome, ladies. Ah, that was a bad intro. I'll just start that over. <laughs> Stumbled over my words. Three seconds. Right. <laughs> we lasted three, three seconds. Two, I'm used to that. One. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second episode of Loosely Scripted. Thank you for joining me today. If you've never seen the show, it's a show that has no script, no rules, and we can just say whatever it is that we're feeling. On today's show, I've brought in a good friend of mine, another man from the Counter-Strike world, and of course, he's bald and beautiful just like yeah, me. You know. Why don't we go ahead and bring in my friend here, Tom Bismeyer. Tom, thanks for joining me. Oh, no, I'm happy to. It's always good to help out a bald brother. I've noticed a lot of people joining us recently as well, which just makes things that much better. I'm hoping Jason Kaplan will shave his head again. He's been there before, and it'd be nice to have a bald duo going, I think. I feel like the bald people in the esports world are the ones that are at the top, the tippy top. I'm not wrong. Yeah, you know, Richard Lewis was there for quite a while. You got Moses. Like, I don't know. I, I, think, I think Anders would look good bald. I think it would suit him, especially with the big beard he's got going. Although I'm not sure he'd be too happy if uh, someone did it while he wasn't watching. But we got Zaiwu now. Like, uh, if and we Apex. get simple, Apex shaved his head too. That is too. I, I pr pretty much the whole of the Vitality team. Yeah, done Shocks. It, so. Shocks did it. I think I saw maybe, Shocks. Maybe with that's it. why Alex left. He wouldn't shave his head. That's the true <laughs> reason behind Alex's departure from Vitality. Yeah, but we, Tom, we've I really mean, secret info. We've known each other for a while. Uh, you've been a part mm. of the Counter-Strike scene for a decent chunk of time. Was this always something that you wanted to do? Did you always say, growing up, I'm going to be a professional Counter-Strike Global Offensive oh, caster? No. And people are like, what the hell's Counter-Strike Global Offensive? It doesn't even exist yet. And you're like, it will someday. But seriously, but that, what, what was it? What was your life goal? Uh, to be honest, when I was younger, I was one of those people who had absolutely no clue. Like, absolutely nothing. Like, finding Counter-Strike, I think, was just like a, a stroke of luck. And... I wasn't one of those people who was like PC gaming since the age of like nine. I, I got into it really late. Like I think it was basically towards the end of like school, like going into sixth form, I just started PC gaming. But before that, it was always like Xbox, I play in Halo and stuff like that. So I, I always loved video games, but I never really had the means to push it for something as a job. Like I wasn't getting like a, a HD PVR or whatever and just recording everything I was doing. I was just playing for fun. And mainly what I enjoyed doing was like business, like marketing and stuff like that. That's what my degree ended up being in. But all in all, it was it was never a plan. It was something that I was like, oh, if I can get into this industry, like I thought maybe I'd do marketing in the industry. Like, oh, I could try like marketing video games or making commercials or something like that. But ultimately, no, it was just a fluke. So you never had like a background in broadcast or a goal where you're like, I want to talk nope. for a living. So here's a question. I, I'm always curious on this one. When you were younger and you had to do like a public presentation, like you had <laughs> to get up and do like an oral presentation in front of the class. Did you feel uncomfortable or did you feel at home? Really? I always felt uncomfortable. I, that, that, that was my worst nightmare. Like I, I intentionally did not go to those lessons or for example, I remember even in like sixth form. So when I would have been, like 17 ish in age I, I would go to the lesson unprepared knowing that the teacher would send me home for it just because i didn't want to do it like standing up in front of a load of people was like my worst nightmare and yeah it, it i just think that at, at least for me the way i started it was just me in my room shouting at stuff like there, i didn't even think about anybody watching because most of the time when i started at least there wasn't yeah, me. but to be fair, you're talking about when you were like shouting at a, a gallon of milk, you were shouting at a cup, <laughs> you weren't shouting about a game into a stream, you were literally just in your room screaming at stuff, and then someone put oh, a camera yeah, on of course. you, and they were like, uh, wait, we should get this guy a microphone. <laughs> um, you know, that, that is the craziest thing, because I, I personally never thought I would be in front of people. I was like, I'll never do that. Like, that's not necessarily an aspiration or a goal of mine, but now... And this is something we, we talked about in a previous episode with, with Scrawny. I want a live audience more than anything. The bigger the audience, the better. Do you feel the same way or you feel uncomfortable working in front of an audience? No, I, I think that, that's actually one of the things that kind of put me off the idea of streaming is I hate the idea of just streaming to myself. Like if, if I'm going to stream, I want like 100 people to talk to. I want to sit there and basically just be having a conversation and the stream is just something else because... I, that's the thing I love doing, like talking to people, trying to make people laugh. I say trying because 
a lot of my jokes suck, but <laughs> right they make me you. laugh. So that, that's that's the whole point. But yeah, no, there, there's nowadays. Yeah, I love having an audience. I love interacting. Like I think that's the one thing I don't like as much about a lot of the broadcasts we do, especially like solo casting for me nowadays. I, I I've literally said to people if ever I'm doing anything online can I just talk to the chat and like cast the exciting moments? Cause if I'm just sat here on my own and just casting, I get really bored, but having like being able to communicate with everybody watching and being able to at least talk to like, say for example, when we did the desk, that was a lot of fun for me because it's having a laugh with you. It's having fun with the audience and it's not so much about, okay, this is exactly what happened. That, that's why Potter was there. She was the in-game genius who's going to break everything down. And I was there to be basically the fool, which I quite like playing that role. The jester, the comic relief. Yeah, uh, exactly. I feel like that is my job on every role. That I feel. <laughs> uh, you're the goofy looking dude who might be able to crack a good joke. Usually it's a te- terrible dad joke and no one laughs. Uh, the desk, is that something you're going to return to at all? Uh, you know, you For those that don't know what he's talking about, DreamHack Summer was yeah. the first time you had worked on a desk. And then... Yeah, it was a surprise. And then you got... Uh, you hosted one, didn't you? No, no, Connor that was did. Connor. That was Connor. That's Connor why Connor got one. subbed in and hosted a desk. But that was your first time hosting, or not hosting, working on a desk for that matter. Do you feel like that's something you want to do more, or was it kind of just like, yeah, you know, it's fun to try, but it's not for me? I think I enjoy commentating more because I, I, I kind of like telling the story in a sense. Like I, I actually, one of the things I found quite hard was being really engaged with matches that I'm not casting while being there. I just found that quite weird, at least for the first like day or so because i was just like a lot of the stuff at least a lot of the points i make when i'm commenting is because i've been there i've witnessed it i've even spoken about it and i that's one of the ways i find learning a lot easier is if i actually speak and say what is happening although it sounds kind of weird i will remember that much more like i'll remember exciting moments in matches casting more than if i was watching it even if it's some of the biggest moments that have happened in cs i'll remember the stuff i've seen and watched more than necessarily some of those big matches so yeah i I found that quite difficult at first but i I think it's also realizing straight away which it is quite difficult in a sense that potter is someone that i could very much rely on at at the time i knew her like a bit but i didn't know her that well but if there was a hole in my knowledge it was very easy for me to just go okay she's going to bail me out she's going to be there to basically do the job and that's one thing that I, I really, really like that she about not being necessarily the in-depth analysis person is that I could still question her even though that was technically your job. Yeah, I mean, that that's totally true is that uh, you could just kind of toss back to her whenever you're like, well, ah, you know, let's see what Potter thinks. It's <laughs> kind of like yeah. hand off to the person that probably knows the answer maybe a little bit better than the two of us did. Now, yeah. you know, we talked about how you didn't necessarily have aspirations for this what was your goal? Like you said, marketing. What did you want to do when you were like, I don't know, 17 years old? Like what was your, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to be a policeman or whatever? Well, I sort of, well, basically when I got to like, I don't know, 15, 16, that was the subject I sort of excelled in. Like basically just doing business plans, like coming up with ideas for like projects or even like something that maybe could be created or sold. Like I quite enjoyed that idea. And the marketing side of it was way more fun, just like coming up with silly adverts almost in my head. Like that that was sort of the plan. It was like, okay, can I link this song to a product or can I like use this as an idea? Like I tried I tried coming up with ideas for how to even sell like lottery tickets. I like just just silly things like that. But that was always the goal. And I had some really good creative like marketing teachers at university. I also had some that absolutely sucked as well, but <laughs> that that's something I, like there were there was genuinely a teacher i went into a lecture once and we were doing the you know the tree diagram so basically it's like you take a marble out of the bag and now it's like 54 out of 55 like that was the point of it and it would go along go along and uh he'd set up his whole lecture as if he put the marble back in the bag and he had set, stated at the beginning that he hadn't so i put my hand up told him and he went right everybody can leave i've screwed up the whole lecture and i was like oh God, how, how do you even do this teaching for that many years? And then my personal favorite was a lady who uh, basically got asked a question on one of the first days. And she went, I knew you were going to ask that. And then the guy was like, oh, so what's the answer? And she went, I don't know. I just knew you were going to ask. It's like, 
you're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> so is that maybe why you went bald? It's because you were you were trying to be a grown up <laughs> so young, you know, you were focusing on business way too early in life and it was like, geez, this guy's like forty years old, trapped inside a seventeen year old's body. Let's <laughs> let's let's pick up the pace here, try and catch him up. Maybe. I don't maybe. know. Maybe maybe it was just me throwing myself into esports and stressing myself out that much. Oh, I, I like well. to think that I'm bald because of North American <laughs> Counter Strike. Uh if you've ever like actually watched me work a desk or actually cast, like I've had people say I'm very animated when I was broadcasting because I would like mm. do this a lot. I'd wrench at my hair, I'd be like, Oh no and they're like, That's why you're bald. You're literally grabbing <laughs> yeah. your hair and clawing it out of your skull. I'm like, I'm not ripping it out. They're like, No, I know you're just digging your fingernails underneath the hair follicles and just ripping the hair follicles out. It's like, yes. Wow. That is vicious. Yeah, I never like, really thought, thought about, about that this way. more than I have. <laughs> Why are so, you thinking about my hair so much? So you never really wanted to do this. I, I think that's the, kind of the case with a lot of people is they sort of just fell into it. Uh, you know, I fell into yeah. broadcast. Scrawny fell into broadcast. Most of the people I've talked to have just sort of fallen into esports in general. Like it was, yeah. it was like I always played video games. I always liked competitive games. But we came into the scene before it was established enough that you could be like, I want to do that and I'm going to aspire to do that because other people before me have already done that. When we first yeah. came onto the scene, people were making a few hundred bucks a month, maybe. Now they're making a few hundred bucks a day. So it's like a completely yeah, different true. ballpark. So now it actually can be a full-time job solution. For you, what was the moment when you were like, I can totally do this as my full-time job? I think it's when I like got my first event from Star Ladder. Like, they're, they're probably the main reason I would say that I've actually got somewhere in this industry. And that was... I, I basically I think the way I got into esports is something that I don't necessarily think could be recreated. Like most people who are like UK casters went through UK Counter Strike. I have never casted a UK oof. event. <laughs> and Big you know, it, it's just the case though. You got ESL Prem. It, they're like they at least had the like groundwork to try and build something. That's yeah. why I'm actually surprised that we haven't actually seen more from UKCS in the past because they do actually have the groundwork. They have people wanting it to succeed. They even have, at points, they've had backing. Like, I know Gfinity at, uh, at one point like bought a load of teams and tried to finance them all, and just the league just didn't work. But, like... You need to me, have I, good I never... players, and that's unfortunately... <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I, I, I agree. Like, you know, you had ESL Prem and ESL Prem... <laughs> No, but but the truth yeah, is like or G or G Finite Elite series yeah. as well. Compared to ago. other regions, like I look at like the UK and the US very similarly in the way that the regions were a few years ago. The problem is like the US continued to expand and the UK just sort of didn't. If anything, the UK is kind of smaller. Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest, that's not like I, I don't focus too much on the UK scene. Like I've met no some of the does. players. A lot of them are very <laughs> nice guys. I've I've worked with them with like like sponsored stuff or doing and like i did interviews at one point for i think it was for double tap or something but like it, i don't think a lot of them are necessarily like a bad players or even bad people it just seems like the teams don't work well together yeah but yeah bas basically i didn't go down that route at all like my route was weird like there's people who've asked me like oh how did you get that for or how did you get to this and i started casting lithuanian counter-strike online just like random Baltic matches. I I'd still remember that. I'm not going to name the person, but I remember the guy who was running that actually said to me, because I, I went to cast some like online stuff for someone else. And he went, get your head out of the clouds. You're never going to make it. And I just love that. I love that as a quote, because there's always just a bit now where I'm just like, how's, how's that going, man? How's it go? Like, I, I, I always think that there's always someone that doubts you. Luckily for me, it wasn't like my family or anybody I actually cared uh about but it was still one of those moments where i was like ah screw you i'm still gonna get there and basically all i did was do that cast that for a while and then i spammed emails to every single company under the sun and uh one of them responded saying hey i actually know a guy at star ladder and it, it, that's it that's literally all it took like sure it was six months worth of free casting like baltic counter-strike and i went to like lithuania twice and went to estonia once and did a land there just for fun but like most of it was just grinding and then yeah they gave me an opportunity and i worked for them i think for what two three years and so yeah they're a big part of how i ended up getting into it and i I'd give it when i first started casting the lithuanian stuff it was after i just finished uni and i said to myself give myself a year 
I love the game. I love watching the competitive scene. Like, obviously, you see teams at the time, like the the prime fanatic and like envious going head to head. I saw competition like I saw when I used to watch like football and stuff, like big Tottenham Hotspur fan. And so it just was something where I was like, okay, I don't think this, at least the second tier is dominated by anyone. Like, obviously, you still had all the people at the top, but I thought, okay. I'll give this a go for a year. I'll still go to job interviews. I'll still like try and find a job in like sales or something that I don't necessarily enjoy. But if this succeeds, then that'll be everything. If I fail after a year, then I drop out. And well, luckily for me, I, I got offered a full-time contract at Starladder. Uh, I think like I worked for them in 2015, but I think they offered me the full time either at the beginning of 2017 or the end of 2016. I, I can't remember exactly because it was it was like, like I did a lot of work for them beforehand. But when they actually offered me a contract, I don't remember the date because I think I think I was on it for about two years and it ended November 2018. So I think it must have been about early 2016 some or late no late 2016 early 2017 but yeah I, I did my first proper event for them in 2015 I think in May and that was like a football stadium it, it was uh the one of the first like star ladder i league whatever it was like an 100k invitational it was in uh I think like the, one of the like football stadiums in Kiev which I, it's, I've actually like been past a few times now living here and it's quite weird when you, you look at that and you go oh, I actually cast it in that arena obviously they didn't fill it out it was an insanely massive venue but they like sectioned off a part of it we cast it from like uh, the box where you used to where all of the like presidents of the whatever would sit in there and we were casting basically just with our backs to like a sheer drop off to the edge of the stadium and I was just like this is insane like for a, a first well first paid gig at least in terms of like live events that I don't think there was anything that would ever really top that. It was mad. Has, has anything topped it personally? Like in your opinion, have you actually hit? I I think I I did ESL one Bella Horizonte and that nothing. I, if, if anything beats that, it would have to, it would have to absolutely blow me away. Like Brazilian fans, Mm. even like you were in Rio, there weren't that many fans there. The sound was insane like we were actually quite far away like there was there's obviously the stage you're about like maybe 15 20 meters back from that i could hear them over my headphones and it like nothing so having ten thousand brazilian fans in bella horizonte uh there's never an experience that even come close like to face that many people i think it's it's like what comedians sort of say like oh it, it like i think it was bo burnham said something like we're all the same except i'm facing that way and it it just it blew me away to see that many people. Like, obviously, they're watching the game. They're not watching yeah, me. Yeah. But to look back at that many people and just be like, "Holy crap!" Like, they're. I don't even think they could hear me, but they are loud and they are. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Oh, I can't hear a thing. I think yeah. what someone sent to me recently, like a clip, and one of the things I actually said was, "I can't hear myself speak." <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm. I remember in Rio. I think it was probably about a thousand to twelve hundred people in Rio uh, for DreamHack Open. And I just remember watching Furia play in the final and just standing. There was like a huge guardrail, which normally a DreamHack Open doesn't have something like that. Usually, you know, yeah. seating just goes up until it stops and then there's the stage and there's people around to make sure you don't do anything stupid. But like there is a huge like four and a half foot, five foot guardrail like right in front of the stage to keep people from just like, jumping it and running up on stage. Yeah. And there was like 1,200 Brazilian fans on the other side of it and they were so loud. Now, I got the opportunity to go to the Boston Major uh, and watch Cloud9 win. That was like roughly 10,000 people <laughs> watching Cloud9 win on North Once American in a soil. Lifetime. Hey, I'm not going to lie. It was. And it was really loud. And it was really awesome. And the crowd was freaking out. That crowd beat them in noise. Yeah. Uh, the Brazilians, like, like for all unreal. the pitfalls people say about, like, like, there's all the memes, like, come to Brazil, whatever you like. They are the loudest fans. I've I've not heard anyone come anywhere near. No matter how many people are there, they are the loudest. And yeah, as I said, Belo Horizonte, that is the loudest room I've ever been in in my life. Like, you could stick me next to an airplane that's taken off and you could put me in that room and I can tell you now the Brazilian fans are louder by a margin. There should, there should literally be like, they should be on the scale, like the sound scale. Like, just put Brazilian fans in Belo Horizonte. And 
I, I'm so sad the major's been delayed. I'm happy that they didn't like just cancel it altogether. Yeah, because I too. think that 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 event is going to be incredible. Like in Rio, it's going to be incredible. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that. And I think ESL would do a great job of it as well. Now, during this time, you're working for Star Ladder, and mm. you know you've got this full time opportunity. I don't want to share too much information about you know where you live now versus where you used to live, but at what point did you move and sort of uproot your life, and did this have anything to do with it, or was this just a secondary piece? So I I actually moved here sort of after I almost left Star Ladder. Like I, I lived originally for about a month and a half in Kiev to basically work for them, but it was like. At least I'm terrible with languages. I'm not good at like at, at learning anything like from foreign cultures. That is where I am. Basically, the stereotypical ignorant British man, where I completely suck at that sort of stuff. Like, and so I still don't. I can't speak any Russian or Ukrainian. I've lived here for quite a while now. <laughs> it's definitely over a year, maybe even two. But uh, yeah, when I was working for Star Ladder, at least that was mostly me living in the uk but yeah I, I lived for a month i lived with flakes uh i love flakes to bits but i would rather live with a serial killer than live with him ever again like it, 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 we did just have like our separate rooms and like a really tiny kitchen area but i, I did want to kill, kill that boy like he <laughs> he drove me insane <laughs> But like, I've, I've, I've meet up with him since. I have so many Ryan stories that I love to tell. I can also say that I can guarantee he would almost definitely say the same thing because I am an awful person. Like to put it into perspective, we were in Sao Paulo for WSG, and we basically, as with every country you go to, we've been told stories about how the place is scary. I don't think there's anywhere I've been. But I've heard people, friends of mine, when we were going around London, going aren't there people with machetes here? And I was like, no, that would be mental. Like you do hear these stupid stories about places, but I heard loads about Sao Paulo going into it. And Ryan basically turned to me and he went, well, should we be out at night? Like, what do we do about the gangsters? And I went, Ryan, I, I'm not really that worried because I, I don't have to outrun them. I just have to outrun you. And you just see his <laughs> face just go, because he knew it was true. I definitely could outrun him as well. It was, it was horrible. Like, I'm an awful, awful friend. But yeah, no, li living there was not fun. It was it was tough at the time. Like now I still live in Kiev, but I live with my girlfriend, who is basically my full-time carer. She uh, deals with... Like, she deals with bills. She deals with when things go wrong. Like if there's a water problem or the lights go out or anything, I just sit there going don't know what to do and she goes yeah i'll ring people you're an idiot i get that i love you but you're an idiot and uh yeah that's why i can now live here is solely because of her like if she wasn't here i would not be here either that is just a fact of life and that was why when i was there before it was like just basic basic things like going to a supermarket like sure i can pick up all the stuff i can take it to the counter i can pay for it but something menial like somebody offering you a voucher you just look at them dead in the face and go, I have absolutely no idea what you're saying. And I've noticed that people in Ukraine, you can't just necessarily, even if you know the word for no, they, they will, they'll just ask you a question and then you'll go, and they'll just keep asking you until you answer. And eventually this guy just waved vouchers in front of my face and I went, yeah, no, I, I don't want that. And then I was able to leave. It, it's like, it's weird. And I, as I said, living here with her, fine like it's fantastic rent's cheap internet's fantastic and well I, I like i have absolutely no issue with the place i am just an imbecile so if i was here on my own i wouldn't be able to cope has living there actually made your life easier at all like do you feel like living there makes it maybe a little bit better being a contractor like right now obviously everyone who's a contractor is yeah <laughs> so like all casters hosts talent management, hospitality services, camera operators, admins, like everyone is hurting. Has yeah. that made it a little bit easier for you to sort of just wait it out? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think definitely being in quarantine when you have like fantastic internet is pretty good. I, I'm yeah. not going to lie. Also, I feel like that different countries have had different issues. I think the one thing the UK did very well was they actually shut down like churches, which... I'm not anti-religion or anything, but that is where a load of old people go and gather up, whereas they've not done that here. And I think that's a big issue because from what I've seen, people in Ukraine are very religious. 
they're still going to go to church and that is awful like that's a terrible idea but for me personally just staying at home like the supermarkets haven't been too bad sure there was a day or so where someone bought all of the soap there was there was one guy i saw who bought all all the eggs he just bought a load of eggs and i was like they're not gonna last like those, those will go That's out they think. really fast <laughs> like yeah i don't know what he's maybe he's just pickling. hard boiled like four thousand <laughs> eggs yeah to be fair they do like pickled stuff here so maybe he just put them all into one massive pickle jar and he's eating the most disgusting sandwiches <laughs> ever <laughs> for, like, for that weeks. guy's breath could just kill anyone but that's no yeah people were like still buying a lot of stuff but there was i never had a point where i was like oh there's no toilet paper or all the stupid ones that you've heard throughout the world so yeah i'm i'm perfectly fine uh, the rent definitely is a good thing because if i had the same apartment in england it would cost an absolute fortune so i'm quite happy with that for sure the i think the only thing is like so i have a permit to live here obviously and that is in renewal now which is i'm hoping won't be a problem but obviously i can't go anywhere anyway so i think they basically put stuff in place so i'll be absolutely fine so eh, well, that's not a bad place to be that that's the crazy thing right like you're seeing how this is reshaping our industry on a yeah. large scale. And then you're seeing it on an uh, even smaller scale, like Smuya, who was playing with Chaos Esports Club for oh, Counter-Strike. Smuya had to go back home because his visa was lapsed, so he had to renew it. But because of everything that's going on, he couldn't renew it. And as a result, he got released from his team. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Smuya is a Counter-Strike player who was playing with the team Chaos, and he moved from the UK to the United States to compete with this team, and that's why he had to go back home. So you're seeing how what is happening is affecting people's day-to-day -day life, just working their jobs. You would assume that our industry would be a little bit more um, safe, but then you hear stories like that and you're like, oh man, like that's terrible. Like you wouldn't even think of it. So, so you're saying mm -hmm. that that's something that's playing in the back of your mind right now is like, you know, what happens if my paperwork isn't renewed? Like, yeah, I like from what I've heard at least is that, they are not like if if until that place opens back up again you're allowed to stay here but the the bigger issue for me would be say for example the quarantine ends and then i'm allowed to travel i then can't until i get that back because otherwise i can't get back into the country so although i could go to the job i would never be able to come back which eh, you know when you have an apartment and a girlfriend here that might become a little bit of an issue so i i don't think it will cause me any problems but yeah sure that like I, I think for me, I, I don't really worry about stuff, but if, if you are going to be like just not thinking about it at all, of course, you're going to end up getting screwed. So it's, it's something I've been thinking about. The, the bigger one is obviously just events, because I think for me personally, like I, I have been speaking to a lot of different companies, so hopefully something comes up. But I've been in the weird sort of middle stage where I'm not doing the big leagues, at least this season. Obviously, I did uh, NA Pro League last season, but because it got shrunk they got the right people for the job harry and hugo fantastic uh you've obviously got starter machine every bunch like i i can't say that there was anybody on that list where i was like oh yeah i should be there instead of them they're all fantastic so no not not bitter there at all but at the same time the stuff i'd normally be doing like oh maybe there would have been an event that competed even the stuff that's coming up for example in june or july where technically i'm either partly booked or would have been booked or am booked you're still sat there going like people don't know how long this will last some people say ah be done in a few weeks and others go yeah maybe by october and i'm like well <laughs> that puts me in the gutter if it's october but yeah i'm, I'm sort of in the weird middle stage where i was getting a, at least at the end of last year i was getting a lot of like tier two events i was doing a lot of dream hacks i was doing a lot of events that normally coincide with things like blast pro so I wasn't necessarily at the top, but I was far enough forward where I was doing LAN events. I'm, I wasn't really doing any online. I'd do like ESEA. So now that the leagues have obviously booked the people they've got and the online people are still doing the same thing, I'm sort of in a weird middle ground where I'm like, I don't really have anything to do right now, which I, I've not been stupid enough to like blast all my money on everything. Don't worry. You don't need to like cry a little <laughs> tear for me, but... I, at the same time, obviously, I want to be earning money, so it's 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 a bit of a weird spot. But I I'm I'm not that worried about it in general. I'm just hoping that someone will go, hey Tom, here's a load of online work. Like just stay at home and just do your thing. But we'll see.
I mean, that's the thing, you know, we're, we're very lucky in that our jobs can transition to online. That's where they mm. kind of started. And now we're getting back more to the roots of where we were when we first got into the industry, except there's legitimate pay now. <laughs> so yeah. they're actually paying us real dollars instead of exposure dollars, which was always my favorite. But then I look at like family members, like my mom lost her job. She, uh, she got put on work from home for a week and then he just fired all of his employees. He said, he didn't fire me, laid him off. He said, I, I can't, mm. I can't pay you guys. I just don't have any business. Uh, you know, well, other family members, the same thing. They get wrecked. Yeah. But. So like we're, we're kind of spoiled in that our job can continue to exist. And even though we won't make as much money and the opportunities will shrink, our jobs almost got easier because now it's like, <laughs> I don't even have to leave anyway. my house. Yeah. And like, I'm doing what I did a few years ago. And the reason I stopped doing that is because they weren't paying me enough. Now they're paying me closer to what I'm getting paid for these offline events, except I don't have to leave my house. I don't have to pack a suitcase. I don't have to deal with customs and border patrol. I don't have to worry. Is this actually not a safe country? Like, is somebody maybe going to rob me? Like when we went to Rio, I've like read everything. I'm like, oh my God, I got my yellow fever vaccine. I'm like, should I get typhoid? I was like, maybe I should be careful. Should I take some anti-malarials? Like there's not even malaria there. I was just like, maybe I should just get them. Uh, I did everything I could think of because I read all these horror stories. And That's were, what I said. There's yeah, they were like, I had a fake wallet. Like I had two wallets with me. So I could, so if someone tried to rob me, I could give them the fake wallet and then book it hopefully to get away. Dude, we got there and I was like, I'm never going to leave the hotel. This is a terrifying nightmare land. There's what so much crime. Like everything I Googled day. is bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we get there and everyone's like, let's go get lunch. And I'm like, <laughs> we get to lunch and I'm like, I love this place. I can't wait to come back. Honestly, like I'm being serious yeah, no, it's too. Fantastic. I, I was debating using my miles at one point to go down to Brazil and finding a way to like work that in as a work trip because it's a beautiful country and the people are amazing. Mm. And yeah, you know, I kind of do feel bad for them that their major got postponed. But if anything, now the major is going to be even better because it's a $2 million major. That is Who true. knows if like Valve's going to say, hey, let's make some wide sweeping changes. We're going to increase the number of teams and throw in another qualifier around. And all of a sudden it's like, whoa, this is the new major. It's way bigger than it was before. And now it's five days of tournament, like offline play, like in front of the playoff or in front of the arena. Who knows? Like things could change drastically. Our whole space is shifting every single day. Like you say, we don't really know what things are going to look like. Now, did you actually actively lose any gigs because of what's going on? Not yet, if that makes sense. Like, potentially. Because it depends how long things go. I am currently, like I said, in June I have one that I am sort of booked for, and in July I, I have one that I am booked for. So, if they like i think chances are that they will not get moved online so they would just be postponed and sure that means that maybe the end of the year i'm just going to be working for like three months straight which i think is a possibility for a lot of talent at the moment is you're looking at how many events are actually getting pushed back like blast is getting pushed back dreamhack masters is getting pushed back like there's only so much top tier talent to cover those events so for people like me who a eh, little bit further down that that's opportunity so it, it might work out like that i end up earning the same amount of money over the year anyway just because i think that the end will be absolutely stacked but there will still be some smaller companies that just don't do an event this year which i i think is a shame like although i i do like watching all of the leagues and seeing all the teams get to like play against each other and having a massive amount of money at the finish i think you always lose something when events like slip away like but for me personally i got to go to finland for arctic last year and I really enjoyed that. Like the people were lovely. The event was good. I know. I think they know that there was a few things they could have improved on, and they would. But are they going to run another event? Who knows? Like it, it's it's looking probably less likely now because can you find a gap where you can pick up some teams to play? Well, you've got the leagues already running. That like you got Flashpoint, you got ESL Pro League, you've even got Starladder throwing in their thing that's coming up recently as well. If that's going to be a multi thing, that takes out what, like 40 teams, maybe more, like over a few month period. Then you've got to compete with Blast. You've got to compete with, if, again, if Star Series happens, if they're going to do another one. And you've got the Major, which takes up a lot more time than people think because it's not just those couple of weeks. It's also then the months beforehand where teams are doing qualifiers and all of that. Yeah. There's not that much of the calendar. If you're someone who wants to get into esports or have been in before, like, Hey, Copenhagen Games. 
that used yeah. to be a, a pinnacle event. They've they increased it last year. This year it had to be cancelled completely after they'd already like shrunk the prize pool and shrunk what I, what I believe they're about to like have like less money for like talent and teams. Even the teams that were there were a lower caliber. Like that event was sort of going down already. I imagine this took a big hit to them because. Well, I don't know about booking out a venue, but if it's the same every year, like booking it for a different time might be more expensive. They might have already paid for some of the stuff that they were going to have. Like they only booked it, what? It was meant to be very soon, I believe. So and you canceled it like a month before. So yeah, the coronavirus might have wrecked some small companies. And I, I think that's a shame. Yeah, it, it, it's something that somebody actually brought up to me. They said like, oh, well, maybe the coronavirus is sort of going to like thin the herd and get rid of some of the weaker tournament workers. I'm like, why would we want that? Because if anything, like, yeah, Copenhagen Games used to be like a big tournament and we've watched them get lapped. Like yeah. every other tournament has gotten bigger. You know, I volunteer with Fragadelphia. Fragadelphia was the same size as Copenhagen Games. But we didn't have the same level of prestige as they had when we started because Copenhagen Games had been around for quite some time. Yeah. So looking at it now, you know, you're looking at what's happened with Copenhagen Games and what's going to happen with other companies similar. You're going to see like that tier two and tier three feeder system slowly disappear again. Like those, it's, those, it's those started as bigger. Well. It's also what? Teams like yeah. th these are the the tournaments sure there's other opportunities like you have your mdls and stuff like that which is like obviously a longer grind but there was always a thing like the dream hack i think have managed to continue to do it quite well where they'll try and bring in a local team or they brought in like, a female team once like, they try and give people like different opportunities but at the same time if you remove like a copenhagen games where i think they, I'm, I'm not sure i think it was a year before last like singularity a team that only just been picked up came out and just won it. No one saw it coming. They beat a load of de decent teams. Like even the invite teams, like got absolutely bodied. I remember like a lot of them were friends with Risk, and he ends ended up getting up on the stage and just hugging it. Like those are all moments that would just disappear, and maybe those players won't be found. Like that's horrible. And you think, especially when it comes to Denmark, like Denmark, Copenhagen games, stuff like that. That's where you sometimes see a player that ends up being in an Astralis or a North or even if you go like heroic or whatever you like, there's still teams, Mad Lions. They they came from absolutely nowhere. They were almost like, I want to say like sort of rejects from other teams, like people who, who used to be in Fragsters and stuff like that who came together and well, I ended up getting into the top 20. So it it's, it's kind of sad and I hope it doesn't happen, but I think that this virus will have made a lot of those organizers and even uh, maybe a few people who were like trying to go pro just crumble. Yeah, I, I looked at multiple events that have been canceled, not just Counter-Strike events, and you see all these community events. Those are the ones that are actually the most concerning for me. Like, yeah, it sucks that we'll see events like Copenhagen Games, which are pretty much a community event, but like I'm seeing smaller events like LAN ETS in Canada or some of the small smash events across the country that I've seen getting canceled or FGC stuff that's been getting canceled. Like uh, CEO took a huge hit this year, which is one of the big FGC events uh, run down in Florida. And that was because they, I'm pretty sure they actually still ran CEO. It was like right up until the point that Oof. they could run the event, but like it really hurt numbers. And, uh, you know, I just looked the other day and there was a smash event got canceled. I can't remember the name of the event itself, but if you actually look under the comments, most of the people responding were like, don't refund my money. <laughs> I like, I actually okay. love that. They're kind of like, yeah, that's, that's don't sick. refund my money. Like they're like, we can defer registration. And some people are like, don't worry about my registration. Don't worry about my money. Just use it to try and stay afloat for a little while longer. And hopefully yeah. we'll have an event when this all ends. But the fear is those small companies that ran by on a shoestring budget, they, can't do that especially because a lot of those companies run with somebody who maybe isn't if this isn't their full-time job like this is just something they do on the side this is like a part-time gig so their full-time job is at risk which means their fun thing that they did on the side is no longer viable so the scene is like really going to shift and change over the next however many months and i don't, I don't know I'm, I'm a little bit like concerned at what's going to happen with all those small time orgs. Now, speaking of events, we we talked about what was at one point in time your best event. So you say it's Belo Horizonte in Brazil. Yeah. What I'm would sorry. you say 
is your worst event? Oh, that's harsh because I have to basically just ruin a random, well, not a random. Uh, oh, who who was it even? I know where it was. Like, I I, I know what it was because it was run dreadful, but I can't I can't remember what company did it. It was like it was in Italy. It was a build up to. Oh, I I know it was in Milan. I can't remember what company did it, but basically the the issue was the uh, I don't think the guys doing the production had ever run like a counter-strike event before like it it was they would randomly switch cameras our monitors broke like we we, so we had a monitor in front of us we had one to the left and then there were basically screens in the middle of the arena it was like a tiny little room that had a load of teams in it and we had like the monitor on front of us break then the left one broke so we were casting off a screen that was about 10 meters away couldn't see any of the names or who was getting killed or what was happening just guessing we had uh, the producer who was obviously changing all the cameras at one point lean in front of the camera and go, I'm sorry, guys, about what is going on while we're live on air. And I was just like, nice. We were, yeah, you, you put us on air. And then there was just some just pure comedic moments where basically I think it was me, Hugo, Dust and Blue and then Spawn and Devil Walk. And then the host was like some Italian guy. And there was loads of really awkward moments where it was meant to be like a a spawn and a devil walk on camera. And for some reason, they would just put blue and dust on camera with their voices behind it. So it would just be them having a conversation about nothing and then just these two talking over it. And then they did the opposite, but in a way worse scenario, because basically this Italian guy just went, oh, devil walk, how do you think I've been doing as the host? Like, I I, I don't know how I'm feeling about it. And we were just like, why is this live? <laughs> Why is this on camera? Like, what? How has this happened? Like, this this like heartbreaking to watch. But then, just like it, it was like someone just kept knocking buttons, so it would be we'd be casting around, and then our faces would show up, and we'd be like, "Hello, <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, we can't tell you what's going on because uh, I can't see anything." Like, it, it was it was absolutely mental. And I remember at the end of the event, the guy, I go, "Oh, so when's the shot?" And he went. Oh no, we'll we'll pay for your train ticket. And I was like, I don't even know where I am. I'm just in the middle of Milan, and I have to get back to an airport that's like an hour away. And he was like, Yeah, I just use Google Maps or something. I'm like, This is just completely unreasonable. Like, <laughs> you just don't care, do you? You know this has gone to shit, so you're just going, Ah, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> so by the end, I was just like, Nah, this is not, this not on. But nah, so what year was this? Wrong. It's only a couple of years ago. This wasn't, let's, this let's wasn't see. long ago at all. Uh, let's see. Liquipedia. Oh, you're going to Liquipedia. You're really going to throw me under the bus. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll come out and say the worst event that I did. Like, I've been very vocal about it. It was the R- <laughs> I by Power Masters last year. Um, for, I want to look now. For a <laughs> while, my worst event was the RGN Pro Series in Southern California. And that event was rough, but it wasn't. Zotac. Like, Zotac. Zotac, okay, Cup. yeah, I remember the Zotac Cup. So basically, I've heard the um, so they did they did multiple different events. I heard that the Asia one was run really well. I think it was a uh, yeah Hugo Connor and someone called Luke and Matt Andrews, and they said that that one was run oh, Matt flawlessly. Andrews. Yeah, then there was the the finals that overrun a lot. Like I remember that was like super duper delayed. And I think like Hugo and Connor and Lauren just basically cast it into the night. And uh, yeah, then there was the, yeah, the one that was in Milan and that it, it just, it went so wrong. There was like moments where they had to like, uh, they had to put a big, basically just sheet next to us because they realized that some of the players could see off the reflection in the window. Mm. Uh, they kept so one of the days overran really late and we were only allowed to be in there till 12 and then the next day they went that went well so now that we only have three best of threes instead of four which is always a bad idea uh they then just went we'll just start at 1 p.m instead and i was like but we overran three hours why and he was like yeah but we have it down now and then we did that again and the security guard it was in like the samsung arena and he had strict instructions but he couldn't just kick everyone out so he just walked in and turned all the air conditioning off and uh, this was in June, late June in Italy. So it was really hot. So by the end, we were just all sweating and disgusting. And it was just like, it was just hell. Like, it just wasn't fun at all. And it, it was a shame because like, 
teams that were like trying to qualify they had like Kinguin. like i think that yeah that was when they had a uh, taz on the team so that was like a brand new fulfilled roster you had like that windigo the bulgarian roster even valiance were still like around at that time imperial so that was obviously before valiance picked up a lot of their players it was a cool event there were some good teams but it, it was just the worst run event i think that was just the issue like and my pro probably my personal favorite thing was that me and hugo were in one hotel four star hotel absolutely lovely uh dust and blue were in another one which was a three star hotel but they had scratched an extra star into each room and he had like a one by like the tiniest shower so you could just imagine like dust reaction just being put in this tiny shower it, it was that that at least made me laugh i i know that dust like had a lovely time in milan so he'll probably talk like better about it but the actual event itself it, it just it just wasn't run well that's, that's I mean, the one in recent memory at least. We, we we've all had bad experiences when we were even in brazil for rio i remember my power went out the first day in my room because they sold me a power converter in the lobby my power converters wouldn't fit because they had some like extra thing even though everything i read said they would work so i was using their power converter and it exploded there was like sparks that shot out of it i was taking a what? nap and i just heard, pew, 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 pew. i'm like oh my god and like on the wall, there's like a little burn mark above the outlet, and the thing like just it, it like popped into a million pieces. Uh, so I had to See, call the front fine. desk, and I was like, uh, <laughs> "I have no electricity in my room," and they're like, "Huh?" I'm like, "There's no power. Like, I had a power adapter I bought from you guys. It blew up, and now I have no electricity." And they're like, "We'll get right on that." <laughs> so an hour and a half later, I get electricity back. And for the duration of the trip, I had no hot water in my shower. <laughs> I took cold showers that's, every that's, single that's day. Brutal. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I'm not about so that life. What I would do is I would wet my hands and like smear the water on and then soap up and then quickly jump in and spray myself <laughs> off with cold water and be like, oh, because it hurts when it's that cold. It hurts. Yeah. You don't realize like washing your hands, you're like, oh, this is uncomfortable. Uh, no, it's it's painful. And you think like, oh, it's Brazil. It's probably pretty warm. No, it's not. See. I was fine in the hotel that DreamHack booked. That was lovely. Mm -hmm. But me and Risk stayed like three Dude, or four extra days. That place. And the hotel that, yeah, you came into my yeah. room. The hotel that I booked was dreadful. Not only like the rudest stuff. <laughs> the best part I is you guys I've thought you got had. a great deal. You're like, oh, it's not well, that no, expensive. And it, I'm like, it was yeah, yeah, no, duh. 200 meters. It was 200 meters from the beach. Like, uh, Oh, whatever the famous one in Rio is, I should know that. Copacabana. I've forgotten it. That's the one. It was. It was literally 200 meters from there. That was great. Like walking there every day. That was fantastic. The issue was the air conditioning in the room did not work. And oh, I, I, I don't know if if I told you this. Two days later, I went down for breakfast. I came back up. There were three men in my yeah, room. Yeah, you told me like, about that. I was like, what? And they, they. I was just like, get out. <laughs> like why are you here and then i went i called the lady downstairs and she went oh yeah we have scheduled maintenance in your room i was like well why have you scheduled it for when i'm in my room like that that seems like a terrible idea and she went well because you'll move and i was like well that that's just stupid so i then moved up and i there was another lady who i i think she was also i think she was from america and she was talking to me about why she moved and it was because her air conditioning randomly started leaking water onto her head in the middle of the night. And nice. I was like, ah, maybe I, maybe I was all right there. <laughs> but that's terrifying, being in another country and just walking into a room and people are genuinely yeah. just starting to do building work. Like, it's like, all my stuff's in here. Like, my passport, like, Did you all at least put money. it in a safe? Did you have uh, a safe? I was, I, in a lot of the hotel. I don't think so, but it, it, there's no point anyway, because... Most of them, I'm pretty sure, it's just a little thing you stick in, and you could just pull out the the lock anyway. Like, yeah, yeah. The safes suck. Like, there's a few places where I'm like, yeah, this safe's gonna work. That's why most of the time I try and keep. I either if there's a good safe, I'll put it in there. If not, my passport stays in my pocket all the time because I would rather like if someone tries to bug me, I'll just be like, here's my wallet. I, I'll just keep my passport. But if someone robs my room, there's nothing I can. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that's, that's actually what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to have your passport on you for the purpose of identification when you're in a foreign mm. country. Um, I always feel uncomfortable because I'm like, what if I lose it? Exactly. Uh, like, I don't want to get stuck here. <laughs> um, like, yeah, I love Brazil, but I don't want to be stranded in Brazil. That is a yeah, different exactly. ball game. I remember visiting your hotel 
and being like, oh, this isn't that bad. <laughs> and then we go to the beach and I'm like, my God, this place is totally different from the place that we were in before. Within the walk from the bike path on the edge down to the water, I was offered illegal substances at oh, least yeah. five times. No, to be fair, it starts the out, first though, day, they're, they're the like, first day I was offered that as well. Yeah, like, I mean, it was what? It was Easter weekend, so I guess maybe there was more people there, so there was more, like, people around, but as maybe time went on, uh, I don't know, they dissipated. But it was like, they'd come up to you and they'd be like, you want a towel? And I'd be like, no, I'm not in a bathing suit. I'm in jeans. And they're like, do you need a chair? And I'm like, <laughs> not really trying to sit down, just walking down to the water. Thank you. Do you want a beer? And say no. Uh, caipirinha, which is like the the rum cocktail. And I'm like no. And they're like oh. And like then they start asking the other <laughs> questions. And they're like molta marijuana. I'm like no 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 no. And they're like My, cocaine sniff sniff. I remember one yeah, guy wait. came up to us and said sniff sniff because like that was he was white trying to say like I want to sell you some cocaine. Risk, and I'm like risk one was my favorite because because they basically went up to him and went. Oh, hey man, what's your name? And he went, oh, I'm Niels. And they went, oh, your accent, where are you from? I, I'm from Denmark. He goes, you want cocaine? Like, no, <laughs> like, no, what, what do you mean? That was such a jump. Like, when, and the, but when, Zero we, to when 60 we went conversation. To the beach, there was a woman who walked up to us and just went, can I rub your feet? And I was like, no. And then she went, five minutes for free. I'm like, still no. Like, I definitely That's don't That's even wanna... worse. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I trusted you more when you were trying to make money. Yeah, exactly. I trust you less now that you're just offering for pleasure. Like, what well, is like, wrong with you? It's like, no, I'm a very, very awkward person as it is. That is my worst nightmare. Like, I, I genuinely think I'd just squirm. I just like, yeah, right. Leave me alone. That, the there, weird there thing people is, people selling everything. Yeah, everything on that beach. And that beach compared to the beach we went to first day. So the first day we went to that small family-owned restaurant right on the beach. I don't remember what it was called. Mm. I remember there was that story where Christine tried to order the filet mignon fries. Do you remember the waitress? She wouldn't let her. Do you remember this? You don't remember this? No, so we were at this no. table and we're trying to order. And first we asked for English menus because obviously we can't read the Portuguese menus. But what we weren't accounting for is the fact that our Portuguese or our Brazilian waitress who speaks Portuguese can't read the English menu. So we can't uh, tell her yeah. what we want because she can't understand us and we can't even point at it. Because she mm. has no idea what that is. So then she had to get a Portuguese menu so that we could cross compare and point at it. And, and she'd be like, oh, one, two, th fourth one down. You want that. So Christine orders, I don't remember. She ordered like eggplant campanata or something like that. I think that might actually be what she got. And then she tries to order. You know that. I was sitting right next to her. And I remember because this was such a funny story. She tries to order filet mignon fries. And the waitress is like, no, 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 no. And she's like, I want both. <laughs> And she goes, no. And she's like, can I can I get this and this? And she says, ese or ese, meaning this or that, not both. Uh, so Christine yeah. just keeps going back and forth with the woman. And she just keeps going like, no, no. And finally she goes, she like points at it, points at Christine, puts the menu down and puts like her hands out to as a like signal like big fat belly. As if to say <laughs> like, if you eat all this food, you will get fat. That or she was trying to say, you're not fat enough to eat this much food. Yeah, you I, I'm still not sure, that, yeah. but like, I just remember all of us losing it at that point. Because well, I was, was about to say, like, at, out of all the people at that table as well, like, I don't think she was saying to Christine, you're going to get fat. Oh, no, I think it was just kind of like... the skinniest person yeah, at the table. I think she's kind of like, this is a lot of food for one person to eat, yeah. and I just don't think you're going to eat it. And ironically, she did not consume it all. But regardless like we were in brazil yeah, and we were trying all the food and like it was delicious and it was still really affordable and we walked down to those white sand beaches there's like no one around that beach in comparison to the beach in copacabana night and day difference there was like i do think like from the road beach oh yeah no there was way more people but what we did was we just walked down a little bit and then there's basically just like a vip area where people just like yeah you just buy drinks and just chill and it it Honestly, like that that break was just fantastic. Like straight after that event, like I would definitely do that again, especially if I'm in Rio next, like for the major. There is no way I'm not going to stick around for a little bit longer because the the country is amazing. I personally think the Brazilian barbecue is the best food in the world. Like I, I if if it wouldn't kill me, I could eat that every day because I don't even know how they come out with like that many different like variables of just meat. Like just basically going, yes, we have forty five people walking around just to slice you this different thing. And, uh, I I would go back to Brazil just for that. Like just for the food. Like it's fantastic. 
I mean, the country, yeah, the country is definitely amazing. I think my favorite story, though, I don't know if I ever told you this. Did we ever tell you about how we tried to get to the airport after we left? We barely made it. So me and Alex Maxwell were on the same flight. Alex was our photographer for the event. He does a ton of photography. Alex is extremely talented photographer. He is very good. Um, we're, we're with you guys. And it was like me, you, Launders, Niels, and Tom. And I think Connor and Christine had already left. They didn't come with us. I think so, Connor's flight was really early. Yeah. Well, that's, sure. that's the funny thing. I saw him at the airport, but <laughs> I think he was just being careful because he didn't want to get stranded. Yeah. So we're walking back and I stop with Alex. Alex gets like a burger at some place in on the walk back. So we get back to your hotel and we're like, oh my God. It's like seven o'clock and our flight's at eight thirty. Wasn't like, Dust with you as well? Yeah, Dust was with us as well. So I'm like, because oh. he, I, I, I don't remember your comments about my room, but I know that he shit talk my room more than <laughs> anybody else. So like, what is this? <laughs> I was, I, like, the room was itself wasn't bad, me. but I remember coming back in. I'm like, oh, it's so muggy in here, and like, yeah. I could tell the air conditioning didn't work. Oh no, because he didn't go with you, because he, yeah, he stayed with me for a bit, and was just like, yeah, this room is awful. <laughs> so. We we call an Uber immediately, and we're like, we got to go. So we go up, grab our stuff. We say our goodbyes. Our Uber's outside. Someone else tries to get into it, first of all. And they tried okay. to play it cool like they weren't stealing our Uber. They had suitcases, and they were going. Like, I guess the guy came out and said airport, and they just hopped in. We're like, no, no, no. Yeah. This is our Uber. Like, get out of here. So that was Dust and Launders. I think they got into that first one. And then me and uh, who was with me? Me and Alex got into the other one, and we're like, we're not going to make it. Like, we're, we're 100% not going to get back to the airport in time. There's no way. And it wasn't. It was me and Dust. Alex, I don't know what happened with Alex. Alex ended up with Launders or something because Alex and I were on the same flight. So we're, like, in this this Uber, and the guy's like, you guys got to get to the airport, huh? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, when do you have to be there? And we're, like, 8.30. And he's like, well? <laughs> he's like, I'm going <laughs> to do my best. This guy is lane splitting all over the place. Like, he is, like, flying around. I'm like, my, if I weren't in a hurry, I'd probably get sick. But he's just like flying up and down. He's asking us mm-hmm. what we thought of the country. Uh, somehow, miraculously, we get to the airport and it's like 7.50. I'm like, okay, flight's in 45 minutes. Like, I got to go. So I run into the airport and I'm like, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I immediately am like presented with all these options. I'm like, I'm at baggage claim. Why am I at baggage claim? I'm trying to get into the airport. Why is there all these baggage things? So I finally figure out where I'm going. The line is super short. I get through border control and I am running through the airport, like full speed running. We've all been there. We've with, all been there. with like a pole behind suitcase and a backpack with like a tablet, laptop, battery backup. It's like 15 pounds of crap. And then I get to the escalators and I hear, Buck! I'm like, what? I look over and there's Connor and Christine just chilling at the bar in the airport, just <laughs> sipping on Kyperinia. I give them both a hug. I'm like, I'll see you guys later. I run up the escalator. I get to my gate as boarding starts for my group i am covered in sweat i am so sweaty and gross i literally just change right in the middle of the airport i take my shirt off i'm like i do not even care i had an undershirt on i'm like i do not even care i was so gross and then alex maxwell as we're like boarding it's like maybe five minutes alex just walks slowly onto the plane like what (laughs) happened like we are on the same exact plane wait where did you go he's like i got here I'm like, oh my god! Like I was so stressed, and he was like, cool, cool as a cucumber. The, but uh, yeah, that was a, a fun, a fun little weekend in Brazil. Yeah, I've I've had I've heard of I had that recently when I was uh, going to LA for EPL, like basically just running, running for the flight. And for me, it was worse in the sense that I ran all the way through the airport. Like it was horrible. I get there, I sit down next to the woman. And then they go over the thing and you're like, bing bong. And they go, we are actually going to be delaying this flight for 10 <laughs> minutes. Because, uh, well, some of the people were on a flight that got delayed from connecting. And I was like, that was that was me. That was my flight. Have and you I ever just, missed a I, flight? Uh, oh, dear Lord. So this is the worst. I, I've not heard many people's worse than this, but... I've got one after this, which is the luckiest flight I ever had. And then I've got one, this one, which is, it took me 24 hours to fly from Poland to Kiev, which is a 10 hour drive. Those countries are next to each other. Yeah, they're big countries. 20 uh, 20 minutes. It is the, 
stupidest thing ever, and it is because Lot Airlines is the worst airline in the universe. Even when you tell them that you know their airline is shit, they still don't listen to you. So <laughs> basically, it was a connecting flight. So I went from Katowice to Warsaw to Kiev. It still should have taken no time at all, like two hours, even with the connection. But the connection is obviously really short. So the first flight's delayed. I was like, oh, well, doesn't matter. There'll be another one. Now, for some reason, even though it was like 2 p.m., they didn't have another one. But they went, OK, we'll fly you to Germany and then you'll get another. So I, I flew to Germany and they wanted to fly me somewhere else. Uh, no, no, actually, no, it was flew to Poland. Then they wanted to fly me to Germany. And I went, OK, so this is still with Lot Airlines. Can you make sure that the connection is more than 40 minutes? And she went, no. No, there's only one. And I went, what about this one? And like pointed to one of the board. And she went, no, you can't get on that one. I was like, this is just a lie. But okay, whatever. So I get on the flight. It's on time. It lands on time. I'm like, okay, maybe it's all going to be fine. I kid you not. From that point, I had 40 minutes. They lost the stairs. The <laughs> fucking stairs. The <laughs> stairs to get off the plane. They lost them for an hour. <laughs> So I that so this bloke could basically probably the guy driving just just fucked off somewhere, and uh, so I missed the second flight. So I then had to I ran through the whole airport that I like fucked my legs up like sprinting because I think it's like Frankfurt Airport has like sixteen escalators, and so I was just running up all of them didn't make it, and I get to the woman like pool of sweat, and basically the next day I was flying back to England for Christmas, so I couldn't miss that flight. There's no more flights after that. Uh, Rin was also booked on that flight. It's my girlfriend. She needed to be there as well. So I, I basically spoke to this woman. I was like, is there any way I can get to Kiev for before 10 a.m. tomorrow? And she went, well, this one way and sort of laughed in my face. And I went, go on. And she went, oh, you'd have to fly to Latvia, stay there until 5 a.m., fly. You'd then get there for nine. You could leave the airport, come back in, and then you'd get on your flight to England. I went, OK, book it. And she went, no, no, I was kidding. That's ridiculous. That's stupid. I went, book it. I need to be on that flight. And this woman <laughs> basically went, have some food vouchers. I was like, fuck <laughs> shit. So it took 24 hours, and then I had to fly to England, which was another three. And I remember just getting to my parents' house in England, and my granddad came to meet me, and he just went, have a shower. Yeah, right. like, have a shower. You stick. Like, go upstairs. And it was, it was also, I landed on my sister's birthday, I imagine I was the worst like party guest ever because I was just like I I want to die like I would this is this should never have happened I hope for other people's sake it would never happen again but I was just like you you shit like how have you mucked this up for me this bad it's taken that long I mean at least you were stranded in a good airport like Germany for what it's worth I'm no because I wasn't stranded there I no because I had to get on a flight immediately to Latvia and then I was oh. stranded there instead. I don't so, know how good the airport is in Latvia. I have not had it. It had internet. I can't really complain, but... Because, like, it, it Frankfurt's has, it's huge. Just, like, yeah, but it was all... At, when it gets past, like, 1 a.m., everything just closes. Yeah, anyway, I guess that's so. true. But at least, like, like we got stranded. We were going to one of the MDL events, and we got stranded at Cincinnati Airport. Cincinnati Airport is, like, maybe 16 gates total. It's two terminals yeah. of eight gates each. Uh and they have a tram that connects them, but it's like 150 feet. So like, you don't really need a tram. Like I could just walk that distance. Uh, <laughs> it was really, it was really kind of bizarre that they had a the tram. People waiting for the tram, tram and you're just waiting for them at the gate. Like it ended up being a source of entertainment. We would do suitcase races. So we were getting on the tram because we, <laughs> so what happened was we were supposed to take off from Philly and it was me, our observer, Pythian and Darth Mike, who was one of our other casters for the event. Yeah. And uh, we're on the train or we're, we're at the airport in Philly and we're like, plane's delayed, plane's delayed. Keeps, get, keeps getting delayed. But it's only like small amounts of time, like 15 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, five minutes. We're like, okay, not that big of a deal. You're not thinking like, that's a half an hour now. Our layover was only like 45 minutes, but it was Cincinnati airport. So we're like, we'll be fine. The gates are probably touching. So we get to Cincinnati and we missed our flight by 20 minutes. The next flight, nine hours. <laughs> yeah. To go from Cincinnati to Dallas. We're like, uh, <laughs> what? They're like, yeah, the other flight's all booked up. We're like, can you put us on standby? So we go to this woman up by the, the customer help desk because the person at the, the gate we came in, I was like, I can't help you. I have too many things to do with all these 11 people that are flying on the plane after you. Um, so th she was like, oh, you know, I'm just about to go on break, but I'll help you guys. 
This woman, hands down, the most helpful person I have ever dealt with in my time flying. She's like, oh, let me see what I can do. <laughs> She's like, all right, I got you on a flight. Uh, standby tickets, all top of priority, one, two, and three for the flight at 4 p.m. So it's like three hours you guys will have to kill. Okay. Here's meal vouchers for lunch and meal vouchers for dinner just in case you guys end up having to take that second flight. I put you all in an exit row. I'm like, you are going like above and Jesus. beyond. So That's we ended up sick. all getting onto that flight and making it to, to Dallas. For some reason, one of us got bumped to fourth priority. I guess somebody else also missed the flight and they put them above us, but we all made it anyway, so it was fine. Oh, okay. Then Job. I'd say by far... I had two really bad flight experiences when I flew to DreamHack Masters in Dallas and then when I flew to DreamHack Anaheim this time. That was my fault, though. I got really sick leading into Anaheim, like 103 fever, and I was sick for days. And I'm like, oh, my God. This is like peak of like the coronavirus breaking out in China, but I hadn't really come <laughs> to the U.S. yet. So I'm like, I'm going to fly to California with a fever and they are going to quarantine me. I'm like actually like thinking that's going to happen in my head. And I'm also like, I might be too sick to even do this event. I'm like debating, do I do I call and say like, I can't do this? Like that's a tough decision to make like days before an event. I can't do that to them. I could burn a bridge forever. And I love working with DreamHack. So like, yeah, you know what? Same. I got a few days. I'll be healthy by the time the event comes around. So I make the decision to selfishly board a plane with 103 fever. So it's 2 a.m. I have a 5 a.m. flight. So I stay up all night and I pack my bags. I leave my house at like 3.30. I'm an hour to the airport and I park my car. I'm getting like, I think I have a 5 a.m. boarding, 5.30 takeoff or 5.35. Mm. I get to the gate, like to the security uh, at five o'clock. I'm like, cool. Usually the lines here at <laughs> Philadelphia airport are like literally five minutes. I'm in and out. Nope. It's two hours long. So I go down to the guy at the, the, uh, what is it? The, where you can like walk through with your shoes on. Why can't I think? Uh, anyway, TSA pre-check. Oh, the pilot one. The TSA oh, okay. pre-check line. So I go to the guy at the TSA pre-check line. And I'm like, um, is there any chance I can use this line? Like I'm 100% going to miss my flight if I don't do this. It's a work trip. And he goes, you willing to pay? I'm like, I'm assuming this is like, he's saying you can fast track your way through for like a $20 airport fee. I'm like, I guess. He's like, you got Venmo? I'm like, oh, I was like, no. And he's like, you got any cash? I was like, yeah, I got 20 bucks. He's like, oh, 20 bucks ain't good enough. I'm like, what? That's what like, I got. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you $20 to just look the other way while I walk through a line. And I'm like, not only that, this really illustrates one of the glaring problems with airport security if you're willing to just let me through for 50 bucks. So I go down to the Delta desk and I'm like, I, uh, I can't. I'm going to miss my flight. I need to reschedule my flight for a later time. And they're like, what time's your flight? Oh, it's a 535? He's like, I got you. He grabs me and walks me back up to that same line and goes, <laughs> let him through. <laughs> so I end up getting through. I get to my gate. I black out on the airplane because I'm so sick. I wake up for the connection because for some reason I had a connection. And I get on that next flight, black out again. Perfectly fine. Event goes well. But man, like I was... That guy just lost twenty dollars. Yeah, right. He could he could have just <laughs> taken my twenty bucks, and it would have been the same outcome. Lesson learned, chump. That, but uh, that was like one of those like moments where I'm like, oh my god, is this guy for real? My I I got super lucky on one of mine. It was for a WSG, and I I basically for some reason so it was with Starladder. All the star I was still with them at the time. All the staff were booked on one flight, and for some reason I was on it. It was like. Flew, flying from one part of China to another and then flying to Kiev. And for some reason, they put me on a flight one hour before for that first stop. And I was getting calls from like the guy who booked all the travel, like, where are you? Why are you not here? Your flight's about to take off. And I'm like, I'm already in the next place. You booked this. You should know where I am. So while I'm sat in this other airport, I was like, oh, I've got an extra hour to kill. I was with a uh, Vladislava and then like a uh, pro Ukrainian StarCraft player. None of them, they weren't working for Starla. They were just there. Uh, or well, he was playing and I think she was doing something for them freelance. So they were on different flights from all the other staff. We're sat in this airport. The biggest storm I've ever seen just starts. Like it's tipping it down with rain. There's lightning. You can hear it. Like it's just like, like in the background. Their flight gets canceled. And I'm just like, holy shit, I was meant to be on that flight. 
I wonder what they're going to do. Are they just going to get it later? Nope. Did my flight get cancelled? Nope. They just carried up. You're allowed to fly out, but you weren't allowed to fly in for some reason, which was really weird. And so basically, I get home absolutely fine. Every single one of the Starladder staff and me, who would have been there if I hadn't accidentally been booked on a different flight, had to stay in China in the airport for like two days. Oh, that's and awful. I was just like, I was just like, holy shit. Like, I felt bad, but at the same time, I was like, thank fuck, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sat at home. And, like, Rin's good friends with one of the people who works at a girl called Aliona. And she was basically messaging her, just, like, her lying on the floor of the airport, like, I can't do anything. And I was just like, CS? CS? They got placed in CS? Like, just, just I'm going to do no, whatever no, I want. It was literally the guy who booked the travel didn't even know that I w- he did it. Like he, it was just a sheer accident, and it could have meant that he just sent me somewhere else in the world if he'd made a different mistake. But instead, I get home and uh, on time, and everybody else is delayed two days. But like I, I that's the one time, and they almost didn't let me. Because uh, if if you're English, this was before I needed a permit or anything. You're allowed to be in Ukraine for like ninety days out of one hundred and eighty, something like that, and uh. The woman in China didn't know that that was a thing. So she just went, oh, do you have a flight booked back to England? And I was like, no, I'm allowed to be in Kiev. Uh, and, and, and then she just was like, no, you need a flight booked out. And it just happened that I was going back to England like a few weeks later. But if I hadn't been, I would have just been left in China because they wouldn't have let me leave. It, it, it was the weirdest rule that she just made up on the spot. But luckily... Uh, I, I had a flight book, so they let me leave. But yeah, fly, flying's one of those things. I feel like it's like a massive luxury for us, and I do definitely take it for granted. But the amount of stuff that goes wrong and you can't do anything about it, oh, it dude, just all the time. Like every time you're gonna you're gonna hear a story from someone at an event that's like, oh man, I'm the one that had the bad luck. Like there's always yeah. one. There's always one person who loses a log- luggage or has a flight canceled or heavily delayed. Like, I think my first event with DreamHack, Niels didn't get there until the second day because his one flight got canceled. Uh, we did an MDL in New York, and a blizzard hit New York that weekend or, like, a really bad snowstorm. Easy. So we had flights mid-air over the Atlantic just go, nope, and <laughs> just turn back around and go back <laughs> to Europe. And I was like, oh, my God. So we had to, like, do, like, the MDL playoffs for Europe online. Uh, it it was uh, – it's always been something that you never know what's going to happen. You just hope for the best. Uh, you luckily, I don't think there's really been many major events where a team has been unable to make it. I'm trying to think like yeah, it's only visas, like the Chinese. Exactly, teams. it's never like what someone doesn't get, get there because a flight doesn't come through or a plane gets yeah. canceled. Usually, it's just oh, it's a visa problem or one player. Well, wasn't there? Uh, it was the ECS finals and EPL finals uh, last year, where basically they had to delay all of Team Liquid's games because uh, Astralis got on an earlier flight and they didn't. So because of that, they wouldn't have made their matches at all. Like, it, but that was, I think that was just like the book. It wasn't booked properly or something, but um, I yeah. think, wasn't it? Uh, man, the final been... overran by such a, a long amount that basically they both missed their was flight. Was it DreamHack Masters Dallas into Odense? I thought it was ECS because I I I remember there being yeah like you a might back be right between you, the two you might be right I can't remember what it was but I do remember players being like we just won let's go to the airport um, well they did they did also that happened at Masters as well that happened again like that happened twice but I don't think anybody missed it it was just that I think uh, it was EG basically just went and bombed straight out of that tournament because yeah they just, that's they, they what it was so they were so jet lagged yeah, yeah that was, a, was that was a different one. But yeah, that was just because they flew straight from. It must have been America to Europe, so I don't know which event it was. But yeah, they basically just got owned. I think they flew to DreamHack Masters from, uh, maybe like one of the EPL events that was in America. I don't know. Maybe New York. It might have been New York or Chicago. I'm trying to remember the the landscape. It's hard to keep track of events uh, because it feels like they just like. This is constant. There's an event after an event after an event. Speaking of an event after an event after an event, I don't know when your next event is going to be. Do you have anything that's like official, like end of year? Have you? Do you actually have anything that's officially booked or no? 
Oh, I have I have a couple of things that are officially booked, but obviously not announced, so I can't say what they are. But will you yeah. be coming to the United States at all? As of right now, no. Boo. I was hopeful yeah. I'd get to see you, Tom, because I feel like we haven't seen each other. I think in you're a while, more likely but... to be booked for something in Europe than I am to be booked in America. I think that the, I've only been the first time I went to America was last year, yeah. and I was only meant to go to America once. It was I, I base. Well, I think I, I had Atlanta booked for a long time, but then EPL was a big surprise. I didn't expect to be on that. So, mm. yeah, that came out of nowhere. But And I mean, that, I, was, that was interesting as well because I had my... Obviously, I did all my Esther stuff, really. I like all my stuff booking it early. But uh, because I had to change everything afterwards because I was then going to the US earlier than I was originally planning to, so... That that's definitely that was a mess, but it was great. Like I enjoyed, especially uh, being there for EPL. Like just walking around. Uh, I went on a little road trip with Prius. That was fun. Like uh, booking, like him and his Tesla, just driving oh, around. He had a that, rental which... Tesla for that event, right? Yeah, yeah, that was so much fun. Like we basically just went on a drive uh, down to like the beach and stuff. He 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 wined and dined me, of course, and um, yeah, it was that that was that was a really good place to be. And really, like, lovely weather. Of course, you are working every single day, so... I love yeah, you don't really get to enjoy it. Much. That's the one thing that people don't understand. Like, yeah, we get to go to, like, cool locations sometimes. Sometimes the locations we go to, not so cool. Uh, but we don't really get to enjoy, like, the culture that much. At, at best, we get no. to enjoy a little bit of nightlife. So, like, maybe we'll go get a drink or we'll go get dinner. But most of the time, and in this is even in the case of, like, look at Anaheim. That one day in Anaheim, for me, was, like... 12 hours like we didn't get done until i think like 1 a.m the one day the second day because the best of threes just took so long and they were great series so we weren't complaining but like sometimes that happens and then other times i think when we were in rio i think like day two was the shortest day of all it was four best of threes and it was like 2 0 2 2 2 like we were yeah. out of there like 6 p.m so like the schedule is variable we never really know so we can't plan to do stuff um it, it, we don't really get to do that there's a few places where I've, like Denmark, for example, I've been there so many times. Uh, I've been to Copenhagen a load of times. I've seen nothing. But I, I've, I've, never done, I've never done any sightseeing in that country because I'm always, like, whenever I've been there, it's been, like, either just a quick in and out thing or, like, I was there once for when they did EPL in Denmark and I flew in. Uh, I had, like, a nap for two hours. Then a few hours later, I was casting and then went through the night and then left the next day. Like, that, sometimes that's just how it is. And hey, I'm not going to, like, I love doing the events, I love doing the work, but there's always that part of me where I'm like, you know, you know, you have one of those maps that you basically just, like, cross out, and I'm like, have I actually been there? I I, I was there, yeah, sure, I've been in the country, yeah. I have seen stuff out of a window, but I haven't done any touristy stuff, I just ordered food, like, even recently when I was in Cologne, because, like, what, what was that for? That was for Katowice B Stream. Like, basically just ever everything was closed or it was carnival time so there was just nothing open or it was really packed so i just have mcdonald's every day that's not what i want to be eating like like yeah there is decent there's very good german food that you can have like even if you just go for like stuff like kebabs is even better but like mm. it if you like our hotels next to mcdonald's i didn't want to do that every day but i did and then by the end like I was just like, oh, I, I feel gross. Like, I hate myself. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's like, you don't really have many options. Like, luckily, when you do go to somewhere, like you said, like when we were in Rio, we did go out for meals together. We had like fantastic Brazilian food, like everybody drinking out of bloody coconuts. Like, that, oh, that, yeah, that was amazing. That. Yeah, exactly. Like, every single person I think at that event at one point was drinking out of a coconut. And that, that's that's what i want that's fantastic like you get some of the culture you enjoy yourself and that's why I, i'm i hope like if things pink back up i can stay in some of these countries a little bit longer because like you always seem to see the like the minimal stuff luckily like for example i think the reason i enjoyed uh finland so much is the guys at arctic actually flew us out a day before and they even offered and took us around for a bit like i actually had a uh, uh, you know, SJ, it's team that that jumpy, the youngster was on, like the guy who's basically just been lighting stuff up. Um, his their team's manager basically just went, yeah, we'll t I'll, I'll take you around the city for the day. And I was just like, you're playing in the tournament tomorrow. Like, 
Leeds United. And he was like, nah, the players are playing. They're practicing. I'll just take you around. And that, like, sometimes you just get people like that who just go out of their way for absolutely no reason. Like, they don't have to do it. They don't gain anything from doing it. They're just nice people. And I, I think that that's one of the main takeaways. I think that's one reason that even people who are not necessarily doing well financially or even in terms of how well they're doing it just in the game, people will stick around because like the, I, I don't think there's ever been a community, at least in my eyes, that has been anywhere near as good as esports. Like, I, anybody is welcome, obviously within reason. And uh, <laughs> yeah, like I, I've i never been to more places where people have basically just been like, I want to show you what we have in this country. Come with me. Like, yeah, you don't get that anywhere else. I mean, we're, we're very welcoming of people, of all people, <laughs> but we're also dismissive Maybe not me personally. of people that shouldn't be dismissed. So like the the garbage people that no one wants around they get taken care of pretty quickly in our community. We, and we've seen people get... <laughs> they get like, removed, not taken yeah. care of. Yeah. Uh, they they are still living, probably. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I'll need to see the VOD yeah. to be sure. But but the truth is, like, there's people in our community that have done terrible things, and they've been basically excommunicated from our community. Like, they can start getting involved with other esports scenes, but, like, for the Counter-Strike scene specifically, like, everyone knows, like, that person's just not a part of our community anymore. It's time to, you know break that relationship off. And, and I think that in general, though, like you said, like esports has been incredibly welcoming, but it does help Tom that you're such a, a good person. So I think Aww. in general, that makes it easy to welcome you. And, and I think that that is the case for a lot of us who work in broadcast is that we're, we just, we're, we're like, we're, we understand how lucky we are. Like we're like, I get to well, travel think... the world and talk about video games. And like, that's cool. Even if I don't get like a Reddit thread, I'm not casting a major, <laughs> like some idiot on HLTV is being a dick. Like even if all those things are true, I still get to do this. So like I can cast the lowest of low tier CS, but if I can make a living with it, I get to do it. And that's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I think like you notice it as well that I, I think people always assume as talent, we have like these massive rivalries. Like I think the main one for me, so Obviously, I worked for Starladder for quite a long time, and then I wasn't involved in their major at all. I won't lie. Of course, that was sad for me. Like, I love that company. I love the people who work there. I'm so happy that they managed to do that and put on a fantastic show. But of course, there was a part of me where I was like, oh, that's, that's a shame that I didn't get to be a part of it. The amount, there were so many people who just went, oh, this person being on it instead of you, that, that's a load of rubbish. And said it to me, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I can't, at least for me personally, I looked at the people who Starlight are hired for the major, and I cannot see one person who didn't deserve to be there. And there was not a part of me that I hated any of the individuals. Not at all. Like, you, you look at the people who are currently rising up, like the people on EPL, like Harry and Hugo, they are people that I love to bits. Connor and Launders, who are, are doing Blast Pro, both fantastic, both lovely people, people that we both worked with for the last few years. Like, I couldn't be happier for any of them to be succeeding the way they are. And I, I think also, like, the people try and... I, I've had people try and project this sort of, like, oh, yeah, but you deserve that you did this, you blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, so did they. Like, they're my friends. Yeah. I hope they succeed. If if anything, like, them getting better and better pushes me to get better and better. Like, that doesn't... It's not like a hindrance to me that, okay, Harry and Hugo are fantastic now, so I have to remove that. Like, it's just not the yeah. logic of anybody in esports. There's and no one anything, here that I know. If, if anything, them getting better and getting higher up in the scene is actually beneficial to people like us who aren't in that same position. Yeah. Because they can then make... They can say, like, oh, we our host failed. Who can we bring in? Or we need another caster. Who can we bring in? And instead of them going like, well, let's just tap into the pool of people that we've you know, been working with now, they would probably say, let's go and bring these guys in. Like, it, it's almost yeah. like it, it helps us that some of the people we've worked with over the years and some of the people we consider good friends are succeeding because ultimately, like, their success is our success. I, I can't get upset whenever I see somebody succeeding. I don't get disappointed, like, when I see someone even roll transition. Like, if a caster starts hosting, I'm not like, oh, what the hell, man? That's my job because I did the same thing. Like everyone is just uh, everyone is really friendly with one another. There is no sense of competition. There has been maybe twice in my entire career of broadcast uh, for Counter Strike where I was like, that guy probably didn't deserve that game. <laughs> and and the truth is, it's because I also know that person is a undercutting snake who yeah takes like the day rate that everyone afford that gets and like 
undercuts it by like 200 to 300 dollars a day like really heavily undercuts so that they can say i'm willing to do it for this cheap so you should bring me in even though i'm not as experienced as those guys those are the few yeah. times where i'm like man like that's kind of not cool like you totally just screwed a bunch of people over and you're lowering the expectation from all tournament organizers is when you do that because now it's under the assumption that you can just pay people that much money so it's a yeah, dangerous I, I game think the the only other ones I've heard, and this ha I haven't had, and nothing like this happened to me for years, but there would be people who would message the organizer who had already planned to hire me and basically say, if you give me this much, I'll be able to get them to do it for less. And they are they are the scum of the earth. Like Those are the people that... Like, I had that even really early on in my career. I, I'm not going to name the person because I just I don't care anymore about guess. them. But I don't know if you can, but uh, basically someone... I, I was meant to do, I think it was the one of the minors, which really shows how far that has come. I, I, I did solo cast. I solo casted the whole CIS minor on my own from home. Nowadays, it's a massive show, and it's fantastic, but it, it really has come a long way. But yeah, basically, I, I can't remember how much I charged for the whole thing. It wasn't a massive amount of money, but they said if, that, if Starlight had paid this person double, they could get me to do it for free because I'd want the opportunity, which was true. And... Uh, then they would get a duo and thankfully Starladder told them to shove it up their ass and got me to do it and paid me to do it instead so yeah i, I think that was so. one yeah and well i ended up being a, a big part of their company and they told that person to get lost so it 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 definitely doesn't pay like i don't I, as said i don't know anybody who has succeeded and has done well by basically screwing other people over so if you are looking to get into esports that is definitely not the way to do it definitely definitely not if you are looking to get into esports i would say feel free to hit either of us up tom i assume yeah. you would definitely be willing to yeah, answer sure. questions i know i'm always willing to help but tom that's going to actually wrap things up for us today uh i appreciate you taking the last hour and a half we've been talking for an <laughs> hour and a half like this is something i said to connor there's last so much week. more as well that we right could like i feel part, like part we could two, go this go two. we just <laughs> keep this going i would love to have like you and connor come on and then we could just like I'm freeway down. this sitch and just talk for hours because the truth is there's so many stories and there's so much that happens behind the scenes that he's got no to shave his head though and then it can be the the he, well he trio. did he oh. did when he started uh when he started yeah, like, I know he lifting did, he weights, did. he shaved his head, so maybe Annoyingly, he to go down to the skin. And I don't like that. It's the same when Harry did it. I was like, it, it really angers me that you managed to shave your head and pull it off. Like, I, I wanted it to be hideous, just so that I have something. But, yeah, you're you know. like, you shaved your head for fun. <laughs> I do mine yeah, by exactly. necessity. It's like, you, you did, it's, it's like uh, people doing it on their stream. It's like, if, if, I, uh, if, if I get $500, I'll shave my head. I'm like... Yeah, five hundred dollars. Yeah, That'd be nice, I think I paid. It? You're like I paid like yeah. thirty dollars for the clippers <laughs> I used to shave my head yeah, every exactly. single day. Exactly. Like, yeah, you know, my this hair is not my hair is not super thin, but it's thin enough that if I let it go, you, you can tell. And oh, my no, hairline, my, yeah, my cool. my hairline's falling back like a waterfall at this point. It's uh, it's not looking good. But well, that I is going to wrap things up for us. I can send you a picture sometime of yeah. what I'd look like before I did I, it. It's, you know what? Uh, I I've actually seen it. You can Google it. There's an early event you did. Where you have a small tuft of hair, yeah, it's right so bad. In the front. I wish I had it ready. You know what? I'll, I'll <laughs> this at this point in post. I'm oh. gonna edit that in, and you're just gonna yeah, see that's, that that's picture. That's the reward if anyone got this far. Yeah, if you made it to this point, you get to see Tom <laughs> with a small tuft of hair right across the front. Because I was Google oh, searching it times. while we were live on the show to see if I could figure out a way to put it onto broadcast. But Tom, thank you so much for joining me, buddy. I, I hope that uh, you are able to weather the storm as well as everybody else is. Yeah, it's been fun. All right, guys, that's going to wrap things up here for Loosely Scripted Episode 2. We're our second episode already, and there's plenty more to come. Hope you guys join us in the next one.